our contributions in education will be our legacy in this industry. Whether it's through live education or maybe through social media, we're always trying to make a personal connection with you, the learner. At Sam Villa, we believe our smile is our business card and our personality is our logo. And how we make people feel after you experience our education and tools is our trade. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us, my friends, and be a part of the Sandia community. Hey friends, welcome to Wellness Wednesday. Hey Katie, hey Suzette, what's up roller girls in the house? Like usual. <laughs> so happy to have you all here. Please pop into the chat where you're watching from so we know who's in the audience with us. We've got a great show for you tonight. Of course, as always, we got a few announcements to kick things off. So um, let me find it. <laughs> There we go. Uh, of course, we had a great transformation Tuesday yesterday with Blake Reed Evans. So if you missed that, you can go back on the Facebook and YouTube page and check that out. Today is Wellness Wednesday. We'll talk about that in a minute. But September 11th through the 13th, this very weekend coming up, the America's Beauty Show is happening in Chicago. We do have an awesome classroom there with Sammy himself, Jesse Linares, Al Campbell, Twyla Jane, and Evie Peterson. So if you are in Chicago, if you are coming to ABS, please make sure you come by and check that check out the classroom. October 3rd and 4th, the Redkin Symposium Virtual Connection is happening, and you can go to redkinpowernetwork.com for more information on that. And then coming up on the 18th, the Orlando premiere show is coming up and Sammy's going to be on stage with our good friend, Christopher Benson. And of course, you don't want to miss that because when those two get together, cool stuff happens. So um, also, we do have some great promotions going on at Samvia.com. So if you are looking for tools, make sure to head to Samvia.com. So let's jump into education because tonight what I want to share with you is how to self-coach. So um, in the chat, oh my gosh, look at all the people checking in from all over the place. Yes, Kenneth, we'll see you at ABS. Very cool. Um, so what I'd like to ask you is how many of you out there find yourself sometimes just going through the same thoughts and processes constantly. You're constantly rethinking and thinking and thinking and rethinking about the same challenges, about the same questions, but it just kind of turns into this vicious cycle up here in the old noggin where you feel like you can't get control over it. If that's you, pop me into the chat. So just pop, that's me. If you find yourself going through um, the same cycles, the same kind of thought processes, and just kind of getting stuck on certain challenges, certain issues, certain decisions. So Suzette's saying, yeah, Shirley's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Our mind's saying, yes, that's me, roller girl. Yes, that's me, too. I'm, uh, I'm totally in that crowd. Katie's in, in with us, Tracy. And, oh, yes, awesome, Lisa. So I'm going to assume, hey, Nic Nicolette, thanks for popping in from Wisconsin. I'm going to assume that most of us have probably experienced this at some point. So um, professional coaches, what we have been trained on is how to get people out of that cycle, how to get them into a place where they can start to see things and understand things and feel things in a different way to get clarity. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to let you into um, the way that I actually train professional coaches to go through the coaching process. Because this framework that I teach to professional coaches, you can actually adapt that to coach yourself. You can do the exact same processes. The way I know that this works is I do it for myself. So I'm going give to give you the process I go through myself too, to um, make sure that I'm stopping the cycle, stopping that just flipping and repetitiveness that goes through my mind, and be able to sit down with myself and really understand what I need to know from this situation. 
and do it from a place that you're not just going here, but you're also tapping into the emotional intelligence of your heart. You're also tapping into the intuition that happens deep within the gut. So if that sounds awesome, Shirley already says this sounds promising, please put a yes into the chat if you would like to learn how to coach yourself. Just pop a yes into the chat. And regardless if you type yes or not, if you're gonna hang out, that's what you're gonna learn. <laughs> <laughs> so let me introduce you to an, a process that I basically adapted from all of the different education that I've gone through as a professional coach. So this started way back in 2009. I went through the Soul Solve Academy. Then in 2010, I went through some training with um, a group called, uh, um, I'm actually forgetting what the group was called because that's what happens when you're on the spot, right? Also the multiple brain integration techniques, but there's a basic process that pretty much most coaching is built on. And I'm gonna share that with you and we're gonna talk about how you adapt that. Yes, I'm getting lots of yeses, I'm getting some yeses, which <laughs> I love a good yes, Nicolette. Um, oh God, that sounded horrible. Anyway, going forward. Um, so when we're a professional coach, you know, one of the first things we do in this setup is we connect with people. And in that connection process, you know, we're establishing rapport and getting to know each other, just creating some, uh, um, some connection with people. Now, that part, you probably already have some connection with yourself. So you probably don't have to do necessarily that first part. But the second part here, this is the piece that's really essential to any coaching process. And it's how we create the path. So the first thing you want to ask yourself is this, you want to ask yourself, where am I currently? So you want to figure out what's the present state that you are in within that situation. So if you're trying to make a decision, if it's something that's challenging you personally, you first want to ask yourself, okay, well, where do I sit with this right now? So um, let's use let's use a salon um, challenge that comes up. Let's, let's say firing a client, because that's always fun, isn't it? So the first thing we want to ask ourselves is, where am I currently at with this? So I might ask myself, okay, with this client that I'm not sure if I should fire them, where am I currently at? So that's the state where I start to say, well, you know, okay, I don't really enjoy this person's time. She keeps showing up late. She won't, you know, pre-book her appointments. So um, that's where I'm currently at. I'm not sure if I want to keep them. The second step is we want to establish, you can see number two there, the desired outcome. What do we actually want from this decision? So it might be as simple as well from this. I just want to figure out, should I fire this client or not? Go a little bit further. What do you really want? What's the outcome that you want from making this decision? Well, I want more peace in my life. I want to... Uh, have a better relationship with the client if I'm going to keep them. So just really brainstorm, what are, what are the possibilities? What's the desired outcome I might have? The third thing, this is really super key, is to ask yourself, well, what's in between those two places? In between where I'm at and where I want to go, what are those two, what's the block between those two things? Let's, let's use a different example too. Let's say you're just not feeling great at the salon right now. And it's just, you can't quite figure out why you're not feeling great at the salon. You're not enjoying your time there. So again, first thing you'd want to do is ask yourself, okay, where am I currently at? Be specific, dig a little bit further. Well, yeah, where am I at? Okay, I'm not having a good time at the salon. That's not enough. Tell us more. Well, okay. What's actually happening? Okay, so I feel stressed out. I'm feeling suffocated by the mask all day. You know, what's all happening that's creating the present state that you're in? Then, now we want to go to, well, what's the desired outcome? So it might be as simple as, well, I just want to feel great like I used to at the salon. I want to enjoy my time there. Great, that's a fantastic desired outcome. Then you step into step number three, What's blocking me from getting there? What's in between where I currently sit and where I want to be? This can be really incredibly um, 
th this can show us a lot that we're not seeing is figuring out what's in my way. Because this is the place that sometimes things come up. You're like, oh, crap, that's what's in my way. Oh, it's not really the mask. It's not really other people that annoy me at the salon. It's just my energy, my attitude, maybe. I'm just throwing things out there. I'm not trying to fill, uh, fill out your form for you. But we just want to stay really curious within this process. Because this first step of creating the path, what we're doing is we're setting up something we can actually look at, something we can work with. So what we really want to do is after we start to set this up, here's where I'm at, here's where I want to go, here's what's in my way, the next step is now we want to get into exploration phase. So again, this is my format for professional coaches that are working with someone else, but you can do these exact same things for yourself. So you can see under curious questions, one of the really important things that you ask yourself first is you wanna make sure you're asking yourself open-ended curious questions. Okay, well, like what's actually happening here? When do I feel good? When do I feel bad? When, you know, who am I around when I feel great at the salon? Who am I around that I don't feel great at the salon? What's actually happening throughout my day? These are curious questions that can start to expose things for you. And you'll see here, these are what curious questions start out with is when, where, how, why, who, what? So they're not yes or no questions. And by the way, if, if you're a salon owner, a salon manager, a leader in a salon that is watching right now or, or elsewhere, we know that some of you aren't hairdressers that watch this program. These are great questions to be asking people that you are in a state of leadership with. When they come to you with a challenge, you can use these exact same steps. I'm giving you some um, pretty expensive information here. So that's good. So <laughs> from the process of where am I at? Where do I want to be? what's in my way, then we want to start to ask ourselves curious questions. So what you might be asking is, how do I actually do this? So what I tend to do to do this, whoops, <laughs> why is it doing that? Um, hang on one second, I've got to adjust something here. There we go. That's what I wanted. The way that I do this for myself is brainstorming. So um, when I brainstorm, I'll put fire client as my center topic. So brainstorming is a creative process, right? We've talked about this before. And so in that, I want to um, then brainstorm what is all of the information that might come up for me? So um, I might ask myself, all right, well, who is this going to affect? When, well, what are when questions? When do I have to make the decision? When have I had a good time with this client? When haven't I had a good time with this client? How? Well, if I do decide to fire, how am I going to do that? Not necessarily that you've made the decision that you are, but you want to ask yourself those questions. What? What questions are great because they're a little different from why? Well, what would, what would prompt me to want to keep the client? What would prompt me to um, let this client go to someone else? Let them pass on. And why is a huge one, right? Because we really want to understand why this is an issue. Why am I facing this challenge? And again, maybe going back to the other situation of you're just trying to figure out for yourself, like, well, why am I not necessarily enjoying my time at the salon? Then that's a great question to start digging into. No, oh, really? Why? Like, why am I not having fun? Is it because I'm not inspired? Is it because, you know, well you'd figure that out for yourself. But I think you see where I'm going here. This is an opportunity for us to get creative and we want to get expansive with the ideas. This isn't decision-making time. So do not make a decision yet, <laughs> right? So when we're in this creative process, don't make a decision. That's not the quest of this part. This operation is what we call divergent thinking. So this is divergent thinking. So when we're doing divergent thinking, what we're trying to do is get everything out of our mind, everything out of our heart, everything out of our gut that we can. And if we ask 
And Wendy's saying, sounds like I'm talking to my mom. Awesome. That's great. So when we ask these kind of questions, we do get ourselves out of the mind. Because when we ask ourselves questions like who, who questions tend to get us more into the heart center because the heart center is where we connect to people. It's our emotional connection to others. And you can even ask those questions like emotionally, how do I feel about this? You can ask yourself questions that start to activate that other source. Because if we get too trapped up here, we're going to be stuck in the analytical. But the other thing that this process does is it gets us into the creative space within the mind because that creative space is where we want to act or we want to play with. Shirley's saying, Andrew, your new toy is pretty cool. She's talking about the app on my uh, iPad, which I have been really uh, enjoying. So thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it too. So let's go back to our process. So um, right now we're in that exploration process. Now, because you are not going to be um, um, going through this process with someone else, this is about you and doing it for yourself. Or like I said, some of you that are leaders out there might be in doing it with other people. Then yes, you as leaders, you can be stepping into that. But if we're working with ourselves, we might not be sitting and asking ourselves or offering our own words back to each other. So <laughs> this part might not be as important when you're self-coaching. Cool. So I want to pause here for a second. Ask you, well, what is coming up for you so far? Yeah, go ahead, Shirley. Take screen grabs of this stuff. Absolutely. Please just don't share it necessarily because this is, like I said, this is information that I to charge information or charge people for coach training. So um, <laughs> awesome. We got Hong Kong here watching with us. Very cool. So yeah, absolutely. Do your screen grabs. Use it for yourself. So this process of exploration, the next step, this is really an important part because when we're going through the process of having that divergent process where we're expanding out and seeing all the different ideas, that's great because we do get to see everything. And I think it's important that you do this on some kind of paper or uh, I have that huge whiteboard that you guys have seen me work on before. I love doing this on a whiteboard because I can really like see things from big picture. And that's the point. We want to start to get big picture. So um, once we get big picture, now we have to refine it. So um, these questions that I have down here would be great questions to ask yourself. So um, asking yourself, after seeing all of the things that you've written out, all of the things you've brainstorming, what are you seeing more clearly? Hearing what you have now, or not, I guess you wouldn't be hearing because you wouldn't be talking about yourself, but seeing what you're seeing now, what do you see that you didn't see before? What's a discovery? How are you feeling differently about this situation? What's starting to make sense as you see everything in front of you? So um, this is an important process because we have to start to narrow things down. Now we want to start to say, okay, what are some of the things I do see here that I'm starting to focus in on and it's making the most sense because you're going to see a lot of different things. What are the things that are kind of standing out, speaking to me about this situation? And I love this question right here. If you had to choose one thing to play with from this, what are you drawn to? Because we have to start to, um, um, we have to start to have something that we can actually play with. The challenge with what happens when we're in that state that we start to feel really overcome by our thoughts is that we're just starting to build so many different possibilities, so many different potentials, so many what ifs, and that's what creates that cycling process. So we just get really overwhelmed and it doesn't seem like we have a first step. With almost every question, with almost any challenge that's going to come up for you, we have to get to a place where there's a step forward. So let's go back to the example of firing a client. Well, um, in this process, maybe you don't get to the place where you actually make the decision 
yes, I'm going to fire the client. No, I'm not going to fire the client. Now, that's what you set out with. And it's important when you set out with that, well, where do I want to get to, that you kind of hold it softly because that's going to start the process of walking down the path, but it might not be the path you end up on. That's why my company is called the journeyist coaching and not the problem solver coaching, <laughs> because we want to be in that mind of exploration. So at this point, what we want to try and get to is we want to try and get to a place that we have something that we can start to map out. So this is where we want to start to get to is finding something that we can actually work with. Now, this would be the place that if you were with me last week, we started to talk about goals. And um, so I'll actually, uh, <laughs> this is a great point, Wendy. They feel you and they may, may fire you. <laughs> that is so true. Once we start to um, have that energetic thing that's starting to say, eh, that can, that can um, yeah, ignite something within the energies. Good, Nicolette, this will help me think less with the heart and more on what's going to make me more profitable for me to grow the right clientele. Yeah, perfect in this particular context, right? Yeah, Nicolette, that's a great point because sometimes we get stuck in the head. Sometimes some of this can also kind of get stuck in the emotional aspect of it and get kind of stuck in the, the touchy-feely stuff because especially with firing a client, we might be really pretty heart heavy in that decision making process where we are kind of getting lost in just the emotional aspect of it. And we haven't kind of seen things super clearly. So that's a great point. It's not always just getting stuck in the head. We could kind of get stuck in the heart too. So great point, great point. All right, so mapping out the journey. So now this is something that I'm probably going to change a little bit based on what we talked about last week. For those of you that were here with me, when you, know, you were here, Shirley, you were here. Um, so the goal setting process is figuring out something that we can actually play with, something that we can experiment with. And the SMART goal process is a great way to do it. Hey, Julie from the UK. Um, so we do want something that's kind of specific that we can target. We want something, the measurable thing, uh, I can take or leave that. That depends on the type of specific experiment you're going to create. We definitely want something that's achievable. We want something that's relevant to the subject at hand. And we do want something that has some time sensitivity to it because we don't want to just say, well, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to be open to this. That's okay. But what is the action step? What's something that you can do to play, to test. And that's one of the things that's gonna come up when we start to look at what are the elements of a successful journey? And this is again, a lot of the stuff that you we talked about last week. So you might wanna go back to the last week's episode. And again, you can find that on YouTube and Facebook, but really going in, asking them or asking yourself, what can I take action on? So when we, when we think about the example of something like, firing a client. Well, something you could take action on is on the next time that they come in, maybe what you're going to play with is you're going to do something differently. And actually, this is a kind of a perfect example, because earlier today, I got a message back from one of my coaching clients. And it wasn't that they had a client that they were thinking about firing, but they did have a client that's kind of that not favorite client that we all know that we have sometimes, but they specifically set an intention this morning that they wanted to enter into the um, appointment from a very different mindset. They wanted to enter into the session with a mindset of, you know what, I'm gonna have a great day. Even with this client that I don't typically like, I'm going to try to be different with this person. And they said it was really successful, actually. After the, after the client left, they sent me a message and they said, wow, like, I actually had a really different experience with them. Like, yeah, there were some awkward moments like usual, but they, they actually even treated me different. And so that was a great experiment for them to just try something different. So it might just be that the next time this client comes in, you are going to do something different during the appointment. Maybe you're going to set different boundaries with that person. Maybe you're going to be more clear with them. 
And that's an experiment. That's something you can play with during the exploration. And last week when, when we were talking, one of the things we talked about on goal setting is this question here. Who do you want to show up as during that exploration process? Because again, let's go to the place that um, we had been talking about a situation like maybe you're just not having fun at the salon right now. And that's part of what you're trying to figure out. In that situation, ask yourself, what's something I can play with, but who do I want to be during that exploration? So my mom actually, after last week's class, she asked me, she's like, well, what do you mean by that? Like, what do you mean by who do I want to be? And it's what's the version of you that you want to show up as in the exploration process? Do you want to show up as the person that is already completely frustrated with work and not having a good time? Or do you want to show up as that hopeful person that you do actually want to enjoy your time at work? you get to make that decision who you show up as, as you play with the process. Does that make sense? Wendy, yes, boundaries, especially with something like that, that particular client that you don't enjoy or potentially might be letting go of, boundaries are very, very key. <laughs> Shirley, I love that. I want to be that quirky, creative person. Yes, that's awesome. Because if you're that quirky, creative person, you have so much more potential than if you are the person that's already blocked off. Roller Girl saying, I like that question. Awesome. So I'm curious at this point, what is coming up for you so far? Because we talked about starting out with what is your present state? What's the desired outcome? What's getting in your way of potentially having that outcome? From that place, then starting to get curious, asking yourself those curious questions of when, where, how, why, who, what, right? So we want to start to ask ourselves those curious questions. And to do that, we can use a brainstorming process and start to open that place up. Like I said, this is really important when you get into that brainstorming process, write it down. Don't just sit there and meditate and like let it float through your head because then you can't see all the information, all the things that you're gathering, and make sure you're checking in to different places within you. Make sure you're checking in with the logic. Make sure you're checking in with the creativity. Make sure you're checking in with that compassionate and emotional and connected side of you. Make sure you're checking in with the intuitive part of you. Then what we can do is we can go in, or sorry, from the exploration phase, then we can get into this process, the discovery process, where we can look at everything on the big screen and we can see all these different beautiful ideas that were divergently and creatively coming alive. But it's very important that we start to take that into something that we can do something with. To do that, we have to get to this place of convergence. So it's taking all these brilliant ideas and distilling them down to, all right, so out of all of this stuff that I see, what is one thing that I can try out? What's one thing I could play with here? And that's what's really key because we have to start creating some type of journey for ourselves to play with. So I can't stress this enough. And I know that I really stressed this last week when we talked about goals, but I can't stress enough that when we enter into this, it's not about proving something. It's not even about necessarily making a specific decision at this point. It's giving ourselves an opportunity to play with something. Now, in that process of the divergent to the convergent thinking, yeah, there's a potential that something could become crystal clear. Going back to the example of firing the client, there might be some things that come up that you're like, oh, yeah, duh, what am I thinking? Like, it's time to let this person go to someone else. Or it might come up that you're like, Oh, actually, yeah, I don't know this. Maybe I don't know. I don't have enough information to make this decision. So that's where we want to go in and start to create the experiment and make sure that it's something specific that you can actually play with. Make sure it's something relevant to the task. Make sure it's something that's really achievable <laughs> because sometimes we go into it with a little too, um, um, what's the, um, the statement? Our eyes are bigger than our stomach. <laughs> 
<laughs> and sometimes our eyes are bigger than our actual schedule or capacity. So make sure it's something that seems relevant and it seems that it's achievable within your current schedule. Then enter into it with the mindset of play. Then we just have to set out on the journey and start to play with things. So you just got walked, you just had the opportunity to walk through how I train professional coaches to go through the coaching process. So again, if you are um, someone in a seat of leadership, um, managers, owners, leaders at the school, something like that, I just gave you a little peekaboo into how I train people to be a professional coach. And it's this exact same process. We just are tailoring it a little bit more to coaching yourself. Does this seem like something that you could do to get yourself out of the cycling process, to get yourself out of the confusion, to get yourself out of the, the mayhem of just these overwhelming thoughts that just seem to come from area or come from so many different places? Carla's saying thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Wendy, that's so true. It's what we do with clients. And actually, I'm glad you said that because this would be a great format to work with your clients too. Here's the present state, <laughs> especially for color corrections, right? Here's the present state. Here's your desired outcome. Here's the block. Here are the challenges in between, but here's how we're going to address them, right? <laughs> so I hope this feels like something that you could apply to yourself. Yeah, absolutely, Shirley. You can adjust this to be as big or as small as you want it to. Linda's saying thumbs up. Awesome. I'm glad. So hopefully this is something you can apply to your process to get more clarity and more direction, more focus. But most of all, like we talked about last week, I can't stress enough how important it is that we get back to this place that we're excited to play with things and excited to explore versus having to have an exact answer. Yeah, roller girl. I know that there's a lot of people out there that are with you too, trying to stay upbeat. And sometimes we need some, some support with that, but you can do it. No, you can for sure. Um, before we close up, I do want to let you guys know, because I know that there are many of you beautiful people out there that come back to watch Wellness Wednesday on a weekly basis. We're going to have two weeks off from Wellness Wednesday. Um, next week, we're not going to have Manic and Monday because we're going to be coming back from ABS. We will have Transformation Tuesday, though, so that'll be awesome. But Wellness Wednesday is going to be on vacation for the next two weeks. Um, because I will be at ABS, so I have some travel coming up, and then I'm going to be taking my beautiful wife to the coast for her birthday, which I cannot wait for. But on the 29th, the 29th of this month, we're going to do a really awesome Wellness Wednesday. I just finished up an entire breathwork training. My good friend Sean Float, who uh, has been on our, on our show before, Sean, who is already a coach for them, he is a breathwork facilitator. We are going to do a class about how to actually be healthy behind the mask, because I know there's a lot of concerns out there, and we're not going to talk about if masks are good, bad, right, wrong. There's plenty of conversation out there about that. What we're going to talk to you about is if you have to wear a mask, if you have voluntarily chosen to wear a mask, how do you do it in a way that's healthiest? Because guess what? There's a lot of misinformation out there about what's happening back here to your breathing and to oxygen and all that stuff. Um, they have scientific information that can back it. And we're going to teach you how you can actually biohack in a way that you can turn wearing a mask into something that can actually be quite beneficial to you. Imagine that. Kind of cool, right? So um, if you are someplace that you are required to wear a mask, if you're choosing to wear masks, please make sure you are here on Wellness Wednesday on the 29th. I think this is going to be huge for you. Um, and one last thing before we close up, I just want to take a moment in honor of the fact that today is an anniversary here in our town. That's a little heart-wrenching. Um, a year ago, and this is when we had our huge fire here, the Alameda Fire here in Talent, Oregon. It took away 1,500 homes, hundreds of businesses, it was really devastating. So I first just want to show some love to the people that have lost homes. You know, there's been 
lots of things happening in our world since then. So I just want to honor those that have been affected by these things. But honestly, I want to really just incredibly deeply celebrate the people that are on the front lines with this stuff, the policemen that are doing great things for our communities and doing the right thing, the fire people who are putting out these fires and putting their lives on the line to protect us. These are superhumans out there. So if you know a first line responder, I'm going to ask you to do a favor. Just reach out to them and just tell them that they are loved, they are respected, they are honored because we just owe them so, so much. So just wanted to wrap up with that. Celebrate the people that are here on our side all the time. And I'll see you back here on the 29th for another Wellness Wednesday. We'll see you next week for more education. Have a great night, you all. Thank you so much for joining us.